Hello, and welcome to the second episode of From the Vault, Mythologicast. Uh, this is me and Diggle's other half, old person. You know, if you watched the first episode, you got the gist of what's going on. This is a very old video that was lost, and now I'm uploading it, which means audio is strange, uh, we bicker, and generally not scripted that decently, but the ideas that are held within this file are amazing. Take a listen. I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. Hello, everybody! Be -ba 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 -ba. It's Pat and Diggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Digel. No. It's. <laughs> Digel. I'm no. sorry. It's Diggle <sighs> Diglet, or Doe. Diglets. Diglet. Don't. Okay. Uh, enough with that. Let's get to the serious shit. So this episode is the fated theory, the ancient family theory, the bad guys and good guys theory, and the Mewtwo theory, and shit we stole from the Dex, uh, as the YouTube channel, and the well, MS Star Sundial. If you want to subscribe to the Dex, there there will be an annotation on screen right now. Oh yeah, now. that that that'd be cool. That'd be cool for you to do that. Yeah, that that that'd be pretty cool. We are not sponsored by the Dex, but if you are watching this, please sponsor us. And go look at the decks because it's fucking cool. Look at every episode with the legendary in it to see their version of this theory that heavily influenced ours. You should try to get as much uh, information as possible before you comment. Right. So we're going to get a few seconds for you to go ever back and watch every episode of the decks. Done? Okay, fine. Let's continue. <laughs> no, you fucking asshole. No, go back and watch the first mythology cast. Oh, fine. Right. Go watch that. Okay, fine. Let's continue. <laughs> yes. So... God, this guy was such a fucking idiot. Oh my god. Sorry you have to put up with him. But still, this is a very good video. Um, just sit through it. I'm sure the guy is less of a fucking moron nowadays. Hopefully. Eh, he's probably like 13 or 12 or something. Can't blame him. Here's what the decks had. They Why, had a lot of... We have to start off with a summarization of what happened last time. Oh yeah, last time um, uh, people nuked shit and then Arceus pulled the continents apart with people and we kept warring. Right. Continue. Uh, there's much cool stuff. Anyway, um, so the decks had stuff that they have very heavily picked up with Deoxys and Victini. What they said in summary, uh, I hope my memory is right, was that um, Deoxys showed that a lot of, that Pokemon could have originally come from outer space and their original home planet could exist out there somewhere and shit gets sent to us by meteors sometimes. And that Arceus and everyone else originally came from a different, uni a different universe or a different galaxy or a different planet and made ours, not just at the beginning of all time. And that Pokemon exists somewhere else in the world. And my take on that is... You never look up in Pokemon. You don't know what their solar system looks like. We've never seen a spatial shot. I mean, maybe in the uh, Shin uh, Shinto Ruins thing with the cutscene of real life pictures, there's pictures of space or something, but you have no idea what space looks like in Pokemon. Uh, you have no idea if there are similar planets to Earth, if it's a similar solar system, what galaxy they're in, or if they're just floating out in the middle of space and nowhere. Their other thing was with Victini, where Victini has the power to give people the ability to always win. Victory power, just like in its ability. It just It's sent down just for humans to give them luck in battling. And what they came to the end was that in reality, most of the time it, it doesn't do anything and it's just the placebo with the whole you had it in you the whole time, the thanks Satan kind of thing. Oh. Um... So what we're going to take with that is a lot of stuff. I think we should start off maybe with the Anastar Sundial. Whatever we have on that. Do we have anything on the Anastar Sundial? The only thing I have on the Anastar Sundial is how it's somehow connected to um, Diancy and it connects to the Megastones and that Diancy created the mm -hmm. Megastones and it's the spirit of Mega Evolution. Oh, good idea. Uh... Which actually fits in really well with yours. It's confirmed the Anastar Sundial comes from space. Yep. 
And it's also confirmed that the Star Sundial has a connection with Mega Evolution. So, why not say this? The Dan Star Sundial and Iancy, who said, well, Anna Star Sundial comes down from space. In the same or, way, so or the Pokemon comes down from space and then makes it. No, because it's already confirmed that Diancy is a mutation of carving, so we're gonna have so we really Yeah, have... but it could be a faded mutation that came from an earlier primal version of uh Carbank that was Diancy. True. So Diancy and the meteorite come down from space and bestow the mega stones upon humanity to help them in battles. Which fits in with what we said earlier how about Mewtwo may be existing back then. Why else would he have a and mega stone? And just like, uh, just like, fucking Genesect, it's a genetic implantation that's made to be revived again. And we also said that the Arceus's plates were scattered not randomly, specifically to regions in set numbers. And not and... like that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What else is set to every re every region? Um, fucking Deoxys's. Uh, moonstone or meteorites mm -hmm. in specific order right next to each other. Also, I also want to bring this up. If you notice where the Arceus plates are located, they're not even if they're not like randomly scattered around in specific sets. Where they're located is also specific. For instance, you get the um, spooky plate in Gen Six inside the Cave of Emptiness, which. Personally, if they were just random, why would they specifically be in places that that are spooky? And will yeah, and relate to the type of plate it is. Purposeful. And then we get into more genetics. Why don't we talk about human planned genetics? With how all these villains take advantage of the historical uh history stuff that we have, but no one else really can do anything about it. And only the player, specific researchers, like one guy, re one guy or girl researcher, um, champions, and evil teams are the only people that deal with the, the relics and the history and use them to do shit. Cyrus, all the other bad guys, they are fated people with certain genetics to cause wars over and over again, win wars, lose wars, stop wars. Do all this shit, and they're just like a straight bloodline of people that through history have played a huge role. Like Sander to AZ. Uh, that, yeah, sorry. And if you noticed, every single one of them, if you look at what they're doing, specifically I like Lysander and Cyrus are great examples. They, whenever they're talking about being all what their goals are, they're always the ones saying, we're the good guys, what we're doing is right. They don't really think about, oh... I just came up with this plan. They simply, their beliefs cause them to do this. And all of them have a disrespect for Pokemon. Wait, does Cyrus have a disrespect or a high respect? I forget. Does Cyrus care more about Pokemon than humans? Uh, yes. Sort of. Well, all yes. of them have weird ethics that aren't just simple, you know, insaneness. All of them either want to preserve a specific group of Pokemon or want to preserve a specific group of humans, or preserve all Pokemon, or wipe out all Pokemon. That is a part of everyone's theory. Lysander clearly states that Pokemon will no longer exist. And he's clearly sad about it. Yeah. But, um, Team Magma and Team Aqua only care about their specific type of Pokemon expanding and getting more environment for them. Cyrus specifically... Some things I forget, but Cyrus Team Rocket believes that the universe is corrupt and he will recreate it. Yeah, and probably in the name of a lot of Pokemon and like little kids too. Yeah. And Team Rocket is Team Rocket specifically because they have a they have a lack of empathy for Pokemon. That is everything about Team Rocket is that they don't care about Pokemon's feelings. Mm -hmm. That is their bad guy trait. Gen five has. Gen 5 doesn't actually talk about... Well, oh, Gen 5 with N? N's whole concept led to the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon theory where N wants to make a world just like Mystery Dungeon where Pokemon just do everything and there are no humans. They all have this 
this feeling from birth or from environmental situations that make them do this. It's clearly able that something that could be planned by a genetic. Like all we need now is, do we have a gene poke? Oh shit, we do. The access is DNA. But these humans were set in specific situations in specific areas with specific ancient tools and other shit from space just so that they would do certain things. And same with the trainers. And it's not only their like personalities or their beliefs and stuff. There are actually characters who have specific abilities. Look at N specifically. He has the ability to talk to Pokemon. He has the ability to be chosen as one of the heroes chosen by the legendary dragon types. They're not just beliefs. These people have specific abilities that help them. Why does Suiku not go to using he goes to you? Or they go to you? There's a certain eastern fate thing that goes with these characters. Um, mm-hmm. Fucking, what's one game where... I might have been thinking of, a, of the manga, but certain legendaries will bond to certain bad guys even if they're bad guys some will bond to you um just like black and, and white yeah and in some cases people forcefully use legendaries but like we don't know exactly how the red and blue orbs work they could end up being megastones and but we, that still doesn't explain the high extreme concept of mind bending shit hmm? so we are so we're Getting to the little nitty gritty of it, that the heroes and the villains are both chosen. And when you think about it, it's really the hero, the villain thing makes sense, but the hero thing makes more sense. You notice how it's always you and the main character in the games who always connects with the legendary. And even like characters comment on it how there's something sort of different about you, or something that reminds you of a guy three years ago, three or two years ago. Right. Specifically, gold and red. Red gold. Uh, is well, I mean, more with the two back to back, only two year difference of trainers in black and white and black and white two. Yeah. Where it's like that was like oh shit moments for whoever was planning that because they needed to make the same thing happen twice without looking too suspicious. And there is more connection. I love this is one of my favorite things in the game. If you go to the town of the original starter trainer. You can actually meet that trainer's mother. And she does talk about her son. So the son is still out there. You can do that in both generations, Gen 2 and Gen 5. Exactly. I just, I don't know, that's a funny strike for me. I just like that. Oh, that's so cool. You can go to Red's house and go, talk to Blue about Red and all sorts of shit. You also meet Red. And you notice it's the exact same Red. He has the classic team. It's just well, like... It's so ridiculous that you fight red, but you don't fight white or black. Oh, well, we're getting off topic. We're getting off topic. Yeah, sorry. Right. But the heroes are chosen. Fated. And we have a ton of Pokemon that do this, and their sole purpose is to interact with humans. We have Victini, who is just straight up given to you in Gen 5, in the first half of of Gen 5. And fucking like victory powers, because shit was so weird in that gen er, in that generation that they needed two heroes and they needed a specific Pokemon to make it so that you couldn't lose. And mm-hmm. um, so we also have Celebi who can clearly go back in time and set specific stuff, but we have other Pokemon that could possibly do much much more. The Lake Trio, Arceus and Unknown. And maybe Deoxys with DNA. They're all sorts... Jirachi. Yeah, Jirachi was Grand just like fucking wishes. magic. Just straight up magic. Yeah. yeah, Jirachi, yeah. Jirachi comes down, only humans can make the wish. And three wishes and does a bunch of shit with them. And causes a lot of damage. Because humans are, de- are dicks. But like, why are there specific Pokemon set out just to help humans do specific tasks? So, the answer? Yeah. I was so this, wait for you to cu- say the answer. Well, the interesting thing is, in the first episode we talked about the gods getting angry about all the wars, but in this episode it sounds like either the characters are made to cause wars or to win them or something, but 
Why would they get upset if it's going as they planned? Where it's clearly planned that wars are supposed to happen, even if they're one on one wars. Well, if you notice, the first hero we really, even as we play as, really doesn't come around till the times of Red and Blue. Which is interesting because. Well, I mean, you meet some ancient kind of heroes in the. Uh, in the Ranger games with Celebi. Right, but, I mean, if we're talking about the Ranger games, really, that's your more forte than mine. Yeah, because I've played one. Right. But... It was a good one. Guardian Signs was fucking fun. Oh, I forgot to mention. Shit. Um, so, uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, on the list of super weapons, also the golden suit of armor from, uh, from fucking the, uh, Ranger signs, guardian signs, and that people ride fucking legendary Pokemon in that too. Right. But and again, oh god, I forgot to mention all of these and the snag balls and the shadow Pokemon and all that stuff too. I thought we were talking not. Oh right, snag balls. I know. I just I can't believe I forgot to mention that stuff. It's so cool. Right. That's also weapons. If you were continuation of the last episode, but really the thing is, if you look at it. The gods sort of are saying it's going as they plan. They want to stop the wars. Really, that's sort of what they're doing. They want to stop the wars and then cause them. I mean, well, really, you could say... It, it, the other thing. Lysander? Uh, no, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say that he, there's a lot of... There's a big memes and stuff on the internet how you can catch God, the God Pokemon. But when you really get down to that, and if you're thinking about that, Humans might sort of be beyond uh, Arceus's control. I mean, Arceus was able to separate the region. That yeah, that I could do. But humans have the potential to catch Arceus. So in order to stop these humans from doing it, it needs. But to then use... again, it's not primal Arceus. True, but that was the primal Arceus which separated the regions. But this isn't primal Arceus. This is just some fucking deer thing. Like it's just. Sitting there doing nothing about 100 right. feet over the heads of the trainers from Diamond and Pearl when they do the red chain stuff. It's just like, what are you even doing, man? Like, you serve no purpose other than take to the Shinto ruins and make another legendary. <gasps> Wait a minute. No. No, I'm not going to let this down. The reason why Arceus exists in the game is in case something goes so fucking bad that they need to make another god. In case one of the very first Pokemon ever created by Arceus, uh, you know, the or the fucking three guardians of the three dimensions, in case one of them fucking dies, there's the slim chance that an item that's impossible to find, the Azur Flute, will be found by a kid in, in, jo in Sinnoh and used, taken directly where he needs to go because um, I guess they f put the lines together with the song <laughs> but like takes them directly to the specific place goes to Johto and back and then creates another god in case shit fucks up that bad Arceus isn't there to be a god that you can catch he's there as a shell just in case shit gets so bad that he needs to revive another deity right but even so you still say, well, Arceus is still the god. And Arceus is a smart god. He realizes that humans have gotten a little bit beyond the powers of non-primal legendaries. They're yeah, the powers of a Pokeball and digital existence. Like, right. if they could just find the, enough similarities between people and Pokemon, they could put people into Pokeballs, people into computers, and then have artificial intelligence. Like, Click on the screen right now to go to a video by the Jay Witz and the Game Theory on how humans are Pokemon. Click it right now. And... Click uh, click here to go to my video, uh, where I talk about artificial z artificial intelligence and the relations to red versus blue and immortality. Right, but anyways, back to what I was saying. Arceus is a smart guy. He realizes while well, humans are out of their control for Pokemon, humans can fight other humans. So that's the whole point of the cho of the um faded thing. For every bad guy that comes around, there's fated to be a human. Given the powers of the plates and Arceus's sort of guidance with Victini and all of them. Unpause. Yeah. Hello, sorry about that. Yeah, so back to what I was saying, 
the gods choose these chosen heroes, give them guidance so they can fight the bad guys they're no longer strong enough to fight. Which, if you really think about it, makes so much more sense than it needs to. <laughs> Anything to add? Um, just a bunch of more stuff with how space. Yeah, space. Like, I mean, I a lot of these legendaries could, like, we have, it's just, it's so easy to think of this other world where Pokemon came from. You could say that not every Pokemon was created by Arceus, and a lot of Pokemon just came from that place Arceus came from. Or, what if the whole thing about Arceus being born from an egg was an egg laid by a what a lot of people would call a celestial being or a star child? Sort of like been... the Titans and the gods from Greek mythology. Or um, the skull, the body of the skull of nowhere in uh, in um, fucking uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. That? I still haven't seen that. It's not a spoiler. There's a giant head of celestial being. Oh, fine, fine, fine. And it but... looks cool as shit. It's actually I mean... a spoiler. But you won't but again... know that's a spoiler until the end of the movie. Oh. Uh, just... <laughs> Again, can we get back to this? Can we get back to this? <laughs> Go ahead. Right, so, again, as Pat was saying, the whole Pokemon theory, there might be bigger beings out there that even then are not as powerful as they need to be to keep the humans. Humans are the main focus of the game. Humans catch the Pokemon, even catching legendaries, and they say, oh, those are just event things. You... Really, when you're theorizing, if you're going to focus on us... Wait, what? the events are activated by events in our world. What if... No. What if no, we made Pokemon? No, 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 no. Pat, we're going to stick yes. to theories. They this makes dumb. so much sense. They exist in a digital world. It actually... Oh my god, it's awesome. Pat, we're not going to stick... We're going to stick to theories, not facts. <laughs> Because we already know we created Pokemon. I know, Just but like I never Nintendo. thought of it that way. Just ask the Nintendo. But you, you, but even so, you could think of these events as sort of parts along your journey, which the chosen hero must go along. I mean, the land bridge doesn't appear to anyone else for Shaman. The Kini only really responds to you when you go meet it in its lighthouse. Well, yeah, you and the faded earlier versions. Right. Yeah, he wouldn't respond to the guy who bought it. So he just put it in a house somewhere. Mm-hmm. But as soon as it sees you, it's like, how? Catch me. It's hey, knows... how's your dust lock? Now it's even better, because I'm here. Yeah, it knows you're the chosen trainer. So that it's going to fulfill its It's, it's your goal. aura. Aura could be a huge other topic. Yeah, we're going to save that for a later video. But really, that's sort of... And so... Recap, the Pokemon Pangea theory combines a bunch of all the theories about the Chosen stuff and stuff, and really, but it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. War is really the center of all of this. All the regions where one's connected, war equals regions get split apart. Region, regions still fight at war, which turns to Arceus needs to, uh, Arceus sends the Lake Trio to wipe out all the memories of war, and to keep them and out. make people happy, and that's why we can travel in undisputed waters without getting submarined. I mean, if you think about it, the fact maybe the wiping of people's memories, maybe that had certain side effects. Like maybe that's why t parents are so unconcerned about their children. <laughs> no, that's because that's the tradition is you have every child be a Pokemon trainer for the standing army. Yeah, I know, but I just hate the Gen Three mother because she makes you ride in the back of a truck. <laughs> hey, you've never done that. No, I've always sat in a truck. I've always sat not r cr crowded around boxes. <laughs> but, again, war equals the Lake Trio. But there are people who still want to start big battles, use the legendary Pokemon again, which leads to Arceus creating a re reincarnation cycle of heroes to fight the bad guys. And there's nothing Nintendo hasn't done before. Just look at the Legend oh, of Zelda. Oh, totally. Yeah. Legend it's... of Zelda is literally the embodiment of this. Yes, it's very, it's a perfect scenario, which also says that maybe the heroes weren't made to counter them, but the heroes were always there. And 
even after the hero comes by, there still can be a city completely destroyed. <laughs> Man of Steel. Dude. No. <laughs> anyway, continue. Right, but again, it's the only thing Nintendo hasn't done before. Let's just look at Legend of Zelda. Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword starts, you have the original Link fighting Demise, and Demise is going to keep coming back. But then Link keeps coming back to fight him and beating him every time, unless you count the Hyrule story, in which case there's the scenario where the hero loses. But even then, Link comes back to, to defeat Ganon every single time. Times. Yeah. Why can't it be with Pokemon? Why can't we have Pokemon trainers? And you notice their Pokemon trainers are unique. Maybe, like, n each of the Pokemon They have trainers... the ability to get a free turn to switch out if you play on shift mode, which only children play on shift mode. <laughs> yeah. I just realized I forgot to turn off shift mode in my Nuzlocke. God damn you. <laughs> but, uh, again, play on set. I, I, I will, I will, of course. Don't but, be babies. But, the... Also, all the trainers, notice their journeys are very the same. You have each trainer fighting an evil team. You have... Getting eight these, badges. It, no, yet seven badges. The big, really big event happens. You get, you defeat it. Get eight badges. Go to the Elite Four, and in the case of black and white, you fight the bad guys again. You always, even before you finish your journey, there's always something for you to... Sword of defeat. The journeys are very the same, but you know, and you get those... and you get very powerful starter Pokemon every time, right? And you notice also that you're the really the only trainer well, besides Gary to really you see at the Elite Four. You don't really see anyone else. Hmm. Cynthia and a, bu a bunch no, of other no, those ones. are the champions, and like what I'm saying is, you seem a lot stronger than other trainers. Oh, right, right, right. Which brings us back again to... And the in, in the original series, you your your story, you never lose. Because if you... Well, I guess in every generation, you never really lose. Because when you come back, nothing's changed. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why you white or, white or, white or black out. You're not just having a normal thing. You went back there's in a, time. Celebi! There's, there's also a reason why in every single game, at least you have Professor Oak stopping you to to get your Pokemon. You need your Pokemon because that's going to lead you on the journey to do everything. Everything that happens. All the unexplainable things. Why did Professor Oak stop us from going out into the wild? Why is Professor Birch being attacked by a fucking Poochie or a Zigzagoon? Why is Professor Rowan and the stuff that hap doing all this stuff? And why it's does Bianca just happen to give another Pokemon? Wait. Why does your rival in black and white fuck it? No, no, that's exactly it. Why does Bianca just show up to give you a Pokemon in a separate town, which is not the town that she started in? But... With, like you you say, well, they do it to every kid, but not every kid gets these starters. They get fucking, like, Magikarps and stuff from their dad. Right, but actually, you bring up an interesting point. We gotta discuss the rival. What role did he plays in this? Sure, I mean, it's just more people in the story. No, 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 it's not, though. Because the rival's different. Because the rival changes constantly. You have the Gen One rival. Yeah, the rival gives you the gives you the ability to self reflect. Not only that, but he also gives you a challenge, something to strive towards. I mean, if you didn't have a rival, you could just be as be as not as successful as all the other trainers you find out there. The rival sort of something to keep you on your goal. And even oh my then, god, I just got chills. What? So, what if the rival is one of these things? A, a backup, a failsafe in case you lose, or B, what was the first one? Um, something to like show that human people can go from bad guy to good guy with a lot of people. Or I mean, C, what if? See, here's the thing. I was a bit bugged by the trainers, the rivals in X and Y. They seemed like I know that they were nice and everything, but they seemed very. Monotone, more monotone than any other rival. Like every other rival has been kind of stereotype, but the X and Y ones were kind of creepy in a little way. Yeah. A lot of stuff in X and Y was creepy. They were plain speaking and strict and like all that stuff. And nobody ever really jumped for joy. Your rivals never did that. Strong did, but your rivals didn't. They were just mm -hmm. kind of like, yeah, cool. And you could say that's a French thing, or you could say that what if your rival 
is there as a surrogate to be surveyed and lead led on the right path. Direct influence. Isn't that what I said? No, I'm talking about a Pokemon possessing this body or reflection to fight you and to make sure that you're keeping up. Direct yeah. influence. It's not a person. Or if it is a person, it's a person working with, like, you get this? Where it's like, fucking cool? Yeah, I understand that, and that does make sense. But there are, of course, things you could bring up against that. For instance, like it's a bunch of muse just like leading you in the right path. No, but a lot of there's stuff against that for like, like Gary. You've no Gary. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It says Gary knew you since you were young. What if yep. the first? Tr what if trainers like that were specifically watched from the moment they were born to be the chosen hero? And through the surrogate of direct, like, puppeteering another human child. Because they can't puppeteer the hero. That would be bad. That would be not right. That'd be tampering. But they can possess the closest thing, their best friend. Oh, and, and you look at it, well, I mean, there's one thing against that, and that's Gary, because if you look at Gary, uh, in Gen, um, Gen 2, Gary becomes the uh, eighth gym leader, and he is no longer say, your rival, you now have Silver. So, what role does he play then? Well, his role was just for a Red. And then after that, they probably leave, stop possessing them, and that's why they stop being assholes after the generation passes. Because uh, course... Blue's not that much of an asshole in Gen 2. Yeah, he's, he, there's he's, always the stuff he's, that says... He's an but... asshole through his entire life, up until you beat him, he doesn't understand... And you could say that Oak convinces him, but really, who's going to get convinced to love Pokemon by Oak? <laughs> what if the reason why all of these trainers become so less, like, less stereotypical after you beat the game, after you do the uh, Elite Four, is because then they get un unpossessed, unpuppeteered. And that's why your rival can finally get, your rival in X and Y can finally get their Mega Evolution. And that's why... Gary is chill, and he actually travels to other regions when he's older. He's even been to Kalos. That's why your rival stops being such a rager, raging person in Black and White 2 once he sees the Purloin. Because at that point, you know, the puppeteer leaves. Why does... Um, Gen 2 has a shitty roster for rivals, but, like, important stuff. No, Gen 2? Gen 3, I meant. Gen 3 is like yeah, no, the I rivals. Yeah. You notice there's two types of rivals. Yeah. yeah. Wally, I think Wally would be the puppeteered one. Wally would be like metal. He was like, he was supposed to be the main guy, but didn't because no, I, man going, Brandon showed up. Personally, I'm going with May on this one. May? May I, I mean, really, she's. If you look at the rivals, there's two separate what types. What the hell is that creeping? Huh. But you have two separate types. And I'm actually looking at the list of rivals now. You have... Turn off! <laughs> okay, I turned I'll it off, I think. Guys, uh, there's two separate types of rivals. You have the... They... The Pokemon need to be strong or else they're useless type of rival, which is blue, silver, um... Sharon, Probably Brandon. Uh, yeah, no, that's... I, I believe he's the second type. Um, Bear... Uh, Sharon... Uh, a bunch of people. And, Keep going. Yeah, Callum and Serena. And then you have the other type of rival, which is more the supporting rival, which is not the direct rival, but is sort of always under you. And it's sort of like there to give you moral support, which personally I see as Wally, Barry, Bianca, and the other three from Gen 6. Yeah. There's always sort of balance except some, in gen maybe, 1 yeah but it's some maybe some of the show, well, um, yeah, different yeah, people yeah. need certain things yeah not always the same there's so like you would think that it'd be simple if they were just faded by genetics but no what if like there is much more than genetics going on here you have to do every single situation possible to make sure that the quantum differences don't mess shit up because you know, even if they're identical twins, 
the quantum quantum mechanics can still render their births different. Mm-hmm. What are we going to do anime rivals? Because Nah, fuck the anime. It's great, I, but it's not canon. I know, because I was going to mention Paul Tripp, the guy from Gen. Well, yeah, just Paul. Paul specifically, I wish, was in the game, because he, I think he's a better rival than Barry. Did you watch the anime? Yeah, but here's the reason why Paul's better than Barry, because he's not possessed and he's actually acting like his normal self. Barry, if you could talk to him after with the game, what you do... He's much more human. Like, you talk to him at the battle area, and he's going to meet with his dad that left, and he didn't have any inclination to go see his dad. Well, why, would, why, would Blue, him, why would Blue... Wait, 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 Barry has a dad? Oh, right, right, that guy. His dad is the, ba- is the battle frontier. Oh, right, him. Uh, or not the battle, him. yeah. But um, why does Blue travel to other regions... And do his dreams after the game. He gets to be a gym leader after the game is done. Fucking thing. Um, a lot of other trainers, after you beat the game, they do what they always wanted to do. Because they don't have to watch you because they're not possessed anymore or puppeteered. Like, like blue, yeah, or blue if you're gonna go Or on. your rival in X and Y, they go and get a Mega Stone. And it's like, they weren't allowed to get a mega stone before because you were the one who had to get the mega stone after you beat the champion or after you just beat the bad guys the rivals become completely different right they become the... human right right you look at the one in x and y specifically all three of them go to different places you can meet um the guy i completely forget the the smart guy's name give me a second uh, Trevor. Trevor, right. You go meet Trevor and he'll tell you about their Pokedex descriptions and stuff. And specifically, um, like, again, Barry goes to meet his dad. Wally goes back to live in Burdenturf Town. I assume May goes back to help her father. And you could say that this is just because they complete their journey, but they don't. They don't get to be the champion or anything. They just fight you. Whose journey would stop at fighting your rival X amount of times? It's the puppeteering. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you have, um, specifically... Well, there is one, of course, that doesn't, and that would have to be Silver. But Silver's interesting, because he is the son of Silver Giovanni. goes to meet his dad! You can see it in the time travel sequence. No, that, Silver... was, that was actually years ago. That happens before the events. Oh, right, right. But maybe Silver goes back and meets his dad. Or maybe Sil- Silver goes and takes over Team Rocket. Who knows? Oh, yeah, I forget his last words. Uh, quotes. Give me a second. I have to look this up. But, uh, even so, um... Chris. Right. Chris is that... Chris is the secondary rival that never got into the game. Chris is who you play as... It's the girl in in Crystal. There are technically three characters. Just like... Just like Leaf in... In, uh... um, Red and Blue, Fire Red and Leaf Green. Oh, yeah, 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 if you look at um the last word Silver says is, oh, no, I can't, still can't wait after all the training. I have to believe more in my Pokemon. No yeah, it's like, deal. it literally could be, um, and this is a stretch, but it could be an emotional breakdown of what you believe in because you're shown something. Or it could be a spirit is leaving your body. Like, Celebi is now stopping, hovering over your shoulder, invisible. Yeah, and that's even more concrete with what he says next. Sorry to I'll have finish got up. in your what? Keep going. Sorry to have got in your way. Yes, that's a great one. He's like, okay. what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? So can we wrap up? Uh, sure. Um, that really does. Again, all of this. I mean, then you're gonna say, oh, well, what about uh, freaking. Uh, the guys from Coliseum and stuff. Well, the Coliseum guys are different, really, in the fa- and the fact that they don't really need a rival because they don't. There's no gyms or anything. Yeah, it's the uh, Wild West. Can you like wrap up really quick? I gotta go. Okay, fine. So again, this video summary for this: Pokemon Pangea Wars lead to the um 
the chosen trainers. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Next we're gonna do a brand new goodbye video everybody. By myself. Subscribe to all the channels. You can, or like if you want to support. You can leave. I'll just finish this off. Bye. Okay. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like down below and comment saying some of your theories, which you probably did so. Maybe we'll take a look Good at lunch. them. Try to find them out. But uh, subscribe to Self Coach Mob channel. Subscribe to both of us. See you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And we will be doing uh, a video talking about the topics we've talked about in these two episodes. It'll be a response video with the current cast. See you then, and be sure to tell us what you think.